All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron, and let me ask you a question. Who will you be voting for in the next presidential election? Will you be voting for Trump? Or will you be voting for somebody who is supportive of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology? I want to introduce you to a man named Andrew Yang. He is a potential Democratic presidential nominee, nominee and he has just come out in support of crypto and blockchain. So this is his tweet. He says, during a Facebook AMA, I was asked about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. I think the technology has massive potential to create a more transparent society. A smart government would embrace this and work with it. I would do that. And it is my opinion that whether somebody is a Democrat or Republican, if they support cryptocurrency, I think that thought needs to be embraced. So I just retweeted this. I'm curious to know what you think. Well, first, let's hear a little bit about Andrew Yang elaborate on this. Yeah, so I, I'm uh, I'm a fan of the underlying technology around blockchain. I mean, it has a wealth of potential. I do think the entire cryptocurrency uh, phenomenon has gotten a bit ahead of itself, but that's normal when there's new technology. I mean, you see that with you saw see that with the dot com bubble 1.0, where it went a little too far, but then you laid this real foundation that ends up creating awesome value. And that, that's what I think is going to happen in the crypto space where the blockchain has immense potential to enable uh, transparency and uh, trust and data flows where uh, it can enable secure voting for, for a democracy like ours. It could make uh, transactions possible that right now and involve massive law firms and accounting firms and the like. Um, and it could help provide the foundation for the digital social currency that I'm very much for. So uh, I, I love the potential of it. I mean, I, I do think there's going to be a very uh, substantial retrenchment at a particular period, which again is totally normal when there's a new technology, um, but it's part of the future. Wow, I like that. So what do you think guys? Are we giving Andrew Yang a chance or are you guys more on the Trump train? I haven't heard Trump really say too much about blockchain or cryptocurrency. Um, Andrew Yang, he seems like a pretty forward thinker, or is he just holding bags? Time will tell. Anyways, the next three stories I want to cover are about the Lightning Network, I want to talk about real adoption, and I want to talk about one of our favorite altcoins. But before we do that, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Stake.com. Stake is an online cryptocurrency-based gaming website where you can wager real cryptocurrency. They are fun, they're easy to use, and most importantly, they are provably fair. So check this out. Use our link in the description. Some of my favorite games are Limbo. I like Plinko, of course. Who doesn't like Plinko? And of course, Mines. So you can see the gameplay going on right now. People are using their Bitcoin. What was this? Dogecoin? Bitcoin Cash. I saw some Ethereum and Litecoin. And yeah, if you wanted to, because they're proud of it, if you wanted to find out how provably fair they are, you could click on this link right here. So so you might have been seeing some other cryptocurrency influencers playing the, uh, the pre-rolls. I opted out of that. I prefer the live reads, a little bit more personal, and uh, just want to be extra safe on this channel. You understand. Anyways, big news for the Lightning Network. Look at this growth. Up 17% in number of nodes. Up 47% in number of channels. Up 53% in network capacity. So the network capacity has reached over 1,000 Bitcoin, meaning over $4 million. And this just happened in the last, what, 24, 48 hours? It's amazing how fast the Lightning Network is growing. I mean, you can totally imagine, we're still in the very early stages of Lightning Network, but you can imagine two years from now, three years from now, in 2021, when this market is booming again, perhaps we're on a bull run, Lightning Network being used, perhaps merchants adopting the Lightning Network. Anyway, this is big news. It's it's interesting to me to see this growth happening in the early days when really very few people are using the Lightning Network, but it's just like a huge snowball effect with this momentum. Anyway, next up, over 1,500 Danish restaurants accept Bitcoin for online orders. So check this out. Denmark named one of the happiest places on earth and known for their award-winning cuisine, is also a Bitcoin-friendly nation when it comes to getting the munchies. Danish website Hungry.dk now accepts payment in Bitcoin 
for online food orders from over 1,500 restaurants in Denmark. While the restaurants don't accept Bitcoin on location, hungry Danes can pay with Bitcoin and fulfill their craving by ordering online and having their food delivered. Great news, right? And uh, this was, uh, I found this on Reddit and I saw some Danish people commenting underneath saying, yeah, this is real, that they've been using this. Uh, do I know any Danish people? What's Sunny Decree? Is that guy Danish or Swedish? Sunny Decree, if, if uh, you have access to this site, let us know if it works. Next up, Cardano shoots up following blockchain integration. So of course the top story today for Cardano is that ledger integration is finally happening. This is Charles Hoskinson, the CEO of IOHK and one of the leaders behind Cardano tweeting out, I got the first one. So you can see it's engraved with Cardano in the back. And um, I, I think this is obviously great because Ledger is my preferred uh, cold storage wallet. Trezor is also good, but I like Ledger. Next up, this is happening. The official Scrabble player's dictionary has just been updated and Bitcoin is now an official word. So Bitcoin got added with listicle, facepalm, emoji, and much, much more. You would think that emoji would have been added a long time ago, but I mean, this is good. Just, you know, the new normal is Bitcoin. The real question here is what the hell is a listicle? Come on, man, get on Buzzfeed. This was a pretty interesting thing. I mean, it means nothing, but it is pretty interesting because it could mean something. So Bitcoin to USD charts, 2014 versus now. This is 2014 at the top. It's crazy how similar it looks to uh, our current market looks to that of 2014. Of course, it's not exactly the same, but it's, it's crazy how similar it is. Um, of course, the first comment says that looks very interesting, but I'm going to stick with my tea leaves. Thanks. Less likely to overindulge in my hopium. But what do you think? I mean, some people do think that we are we're bottoming out. I mean, either way, these next few months in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, they're going to be probably just as boring as they were back in 2014, right? It's not going to be, this is not a year for euphoria. This is a year for infrastructure build out, accumulation, and more knowledge, right? Backed news. So this isn't from the CEO, uh, but this is from the COO, the chief operations officer. So this person knows. Uh, let's just get right into it. Adam White, the chief operating officer of ISIS Backed, spoke about the regulatory clarity Backed has received since its inception. So everybody's wondering, hey, Backed, when are you coming out? So uh, he says, the main advantage of Backed and ICE is that ICE takes opaque commodities and objects and creates regulatory clarity. It did it with energy, it did it with credit, and now it plans to do it with crypto. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is that most of the regulations rely on partnerships. The backed COO further added that the organization enabled people in the regulatory space to understand technicalities such as what a hard fork is and what is a deep chain deorg. According to him, regulators will move at a pace they are comfortable with, which in turn means that ICE and Backed would have to move at a startup's pace. In his words, this is a marathon, and winners and losers will not be revealed overnight. So I have two takeaways from this. I'm curious to know what you think. Of course, let us know in the comments. Um, we'll discuss. But the two takeaways are, he's saying, guys, this is a marathon, not a sprint, and the winners won't be revealed overnight in that this is going to take a while. But the other important thing he says is that, where is it? A lot of people don't realize is that most of the regulations rely on partnerships. So the fact that the Intercontinental Exchange has, I guess you could call it a partnership. They have a great relationship with the SEC and the, the CFTC, who has to decide on the regulatory clarity. And I mean, he can't just come out and say, of course, we're going to get approved, but... He's basically saying, guys, of course we're going to get approved, but this is this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. So, I mean, I like the fact that people from Backed, the leadership team, is getting themselves out there and, and talking about this because, and I liked actually what, who was it? Um, what's that guy's name? Murad on Twitter. He's big on crypto Twitter. Murad something. Uh, he said that in the short term, people have overestimated Backed and Fidel backed and fidelity, but in the long term, uh, people have underestimated what backed and fidelity and the like are, are going to do for this space. Next up, 
A little food for thought in these times of uncertainty. Uh, I saw this post on Reddit and it made me feel good, so I wanted to share it with you. Bitcoin went to a dollar and then crashed to 13 cents. Another time it went to $100 and crashed to $15. It went up to $1,000 and came back down to less than 200. Another time, maybe you remember, it went all the way up to $20,000 and fell to 3,000. Each time of the crash, it's still a much higher low. Bull and bear markets are normal cycles. This is one of the longest bear markets we've seen. There will be another bull market. It what, it's what the market does. While everybody is shouting for a $1,500 Bitcoin, I'm extremely confident we will never see those prices ever again. In fact, I think in the next three to four years, we touch 100K and then crash down to 20, and then the next panic cycle begins. Relax, remember this is a new technology. It needs time for adoption. A lot of time, tech always does. Give it another 10 years, and if by then, after 10 years, we're still around 4K-ish, I'd be a bit more concerned then. I think time is running out for people to accumulate. For those who were here from $1,000 all the way to $20,000, do you remember just how many people were begging for these prices? God, if it was just $1,000 again or $5,000 again, I'd back up the truck. And now it's here and people are worried and afraid to touch it. These are the times to buy, not when it's peaking, when it's bottoming. And then, of course, he reminds us that this is not financial advice and he knows nothing. It's just his opinion. Um, and then this next person says, I'm loving Bitcoin bull bear cycles. OK, um, what's up next? You guys have already heard about the CBOE pulling their futures contracts. Um, of course, the CME still has their Bitcoin futures contracts. But if the, if the direction that we're going is that these futures contracts are going to have to be backed by Bitcoin, that's a direction I want to go towards. Either way, the fact that they are the fact that they are calibrating, you know, just how they're uh, regulating this stuff is good. And that is it, my friends. Bitcoin is over four thousand dollars. But what will it be when you're watching this video? Time will tell. I mean, I like the fact that we're trying to poke through, trying to poke through. Can we get above 4,200? That's what I'm looking for. If we can get above 4,200, could we get all the way up to here, 4,800? Then, of course, we might have to retest this moving average. We'll see. We will see. There's a l many months to go before the end of the year. And, oh, yeah, um, who was it? Fundstrat Global Advisor Tom Lee has predicted a summer bull run. He, or he actually said, you know, within about six months. So it also could be an end of the year bull run. But Tom Lee again is saying he is Bitcoin bullish in the short to medium term. Listen, I'm very bullish on the long term, not so bullish in the short term. But we'll see. All right, that is it for me, my friends. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. Great video.